Hello everyone and welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions hydrology education videos. In this video, we're going to cover what stormwater pond design is, what is the purpose of it, why do we design facilities like this in the first place, and the different kinds of facilities that are utilized in the stormwater and uh, engineering industry. So that's what we're going to go through in this video here. We have a free guide called the Ultimate Hydrology Guide. This guide walks you through all the different kinds of hydrology that's utilized in the industry and what the advantages and disadvantages are of each. So you can check out that guide for free in the description box down below. Anyways, let's take a look at stormwater pond design here and see what the different facets are. So when precipitation or rainfall falls on a project site, the stormwater will run off of the site, causing flooding and creating erosion. This excess stormwater needs to be stored temporarily or mitigated in some sort of way. So in a natural environment, when you have rainfall fall on a certain amount of land or acreage, that stormwater will either infiltrate into the ground and the excess will eventually run off through surface runoff. And natural runoff is fine. It's been occurring for a long time. But when we add project development, such as houses, roadways, sidewalks, there's gonna be more flooding, more excess stormwater coming off that site. We need to figure out how to detain that stormwater to prevent flooding and prevent erosive flow ranges. So stormwater detention ponds and retention ponds help in a variety of ways. They can detain the stormwater, they can control the release rate of that stormwater back into the natural environment, mitigate and protect flooding, and then also protect our streams from low erosive flow ranges and sedimentation. So what is the main difference between detention and retention ponds? Well, basically detention ponds is allowing water to pool on the surface and detention ponds do not have a permanent pool of water on that surface. So retention is going to have a permanent pool of water on the surface and that detention is going to accept that stormwater and then eventually release that back into the natural environment. So stormwater ponds need to be designed to meet project standards and local requirements. Let's walk through a typical design process that someone might go through. So the design process might look like this. It's a typical design process for detention slash retention facility. Process may vary greatly depending on the climate, jurisdiction, and project constraints. So this is just a very general process that a lot of people follow. First, you figure out the project constraints. Where's the project? What is the natural environment like? What is on that project site? And what can you? what is feasible for that project in terms of design of retention facilities? Second is volume calculations. How much water or additional water is going to run off of that project site? And how much are you gonna to have to mitigate? How big is this facility gonna to need to be? So you're gonna to need to determine storage and then release rate of that water back into the natural environment via some form of an outlet structure and then begin construction to the specs that you determined was applicable for the project site. So what are the design steps here? So first, determine the amount of added impervious area to the project site, calculate the total area and land use types for the pre-project and your post-project scenarios. Use the area, any uh, available rainfall da data and land use types to calculate the volume of runoff in both of those scenarios. Determine the total storage needed in your facility based on the volume of the runoff and determine how water will then be released by sizing the orifice or outlet structure of that facility. Then construct the facility to the proper specifications to meet the local regulations. So detention basins help engineers manage stormwater events for developments and prevent that erosive flow ranges that we've talked about in previous videos. So another inclusion here in this design process is the differences between a continuous simulation design process and a single event modeling process. So continuous simulation allows for the design of facilities based on historic rainfall events. And if you utilize software such as WWHM 2012 or WimSwim, it allows for the sizing and auto sizing of these facilities. So we actually, in the program, it actually automatically sizes facilities to create the most efficient design possible so you're not wasting area. There's a heavy emphasis of release rates and orifice design to prevent those erosive flows back into the natural environment. And in single event modeling, this allows for a very simplistic design of facility based on equation, equations such as Q equals CIA, the rational method, which we've covered on the channel. You can view videos here. Single event methods have been employed for decades and are utilized by many jurisdictions despite some of its limitations. So this is a widely used method, but it does have limitations as we've discussed before. So what are some of the facility types that we often see? There's detention ponds, retention ponds. Bioretention facilities is a form of low LID or low impact design that allows for filtration and cleaning of that stormwater as it moves through the facility. And then something like a sand filter, which can do more filtering of the stormwater in a specific way. So detention facilities are not only needed for preventing flooding and preventing damaging erosive flows, but also for preserving the local wildlife and sustaining the local environment. 
So here's some example and pictures here of facilities that are utilized. Retention facility here on the top left, you can see there's actually a pool of water in this case on the top. Detention is basically that pond is filling up and then finally draining out through the different outlet structures there. So you can see the inflow comes through that, uh, that pipe, it goes into the detention storage and then eventually outflows back into the natural environment. So here's some of the works I referenced. I hope this video was helpful. If you have a question about detention, retention, or stormwater facilities, leave it in a question down below and check out that free guide to learn more about the different kinds of hydrology that is utilized today. We hope this video was helpful. And anyways, we will see you guys next time.